want you to close your eyes. Think of your favorite movie. Now, I know it's hard to pick a movie that you think is your favorite, but just pick one that stands out above the rest, or when you think of favorite movies, you think of that movie. You got it? Good. Now, think of what makes that movie your favorite. Okay, you can open your eyes now. If I were to ask you guys to comment what your favorite movie was, each of you would say something different, and I bet most of you wouldn't have the exactly the same answer. That's the great thing about movies, is that no one has the exact same reason, which is how everyone's movie is different, because everyone judges a movie by different criteria. What's up guys, my name is Cole, and this second episode of Cole's Classics, I'm going to be talking about my favorite movie, the one and only, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So I may as well address the elephant in the room right now, yes, I know that there is a reboot, and no, I do not acknowledge its existence. Gene Wilder never acknowledges existence, and I'm not going to either. It's a disgrace to the title Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and I don't think it should have been made at all. Great, so moving on. So yes, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory not only fits and defines my list, it created its own special nostalgia meter, which it exceeds in. I've been watching this movie ever since I can remember. I watched it on VHS. I watched it on DVD, I watched it in a theater, I have the Willy Wonka pop figure, I have a movie poster, I have a poster with the entire script on it. You could say I like this movie a little bit. Now before we get into the good stuff, I want to talk about my Wilder film rubric, which is named after the actor of Willy Wonka, Gene Wilder himself. By the way, the Calf Matter Space scores a 7 on soundtrack, 7 on cinematography and effects, and 8.5 on humor. And it's maxed out in the nostalgia meter just like Willy Wonka, so that movie's pretty high on my list. The first section on the rubric, and this one's a biggie, is the soundtrack. My ideal soundtrack is one with a film score, complete with a composer, and a full-on orchestra. However, the day when I hear a good techno or dubstep soundtrack for a movie, I'll let you know. It also has to be unique, so no using songs from other artists. However, if it's Adele or Guardians of the Galaxy, I'll give it a pass. A few examples of good soundtracks are Star Wars, Harry Potter, or even Interstellar. Willy Wonka undoubtedly checks this box. It perfectly encompasses the mood and the emotions of each scene in a way that no other film has even come close to. The scene that really shows its potential is obviously the chocolate room scene, where the lack of a dominating swelling score is instead timid and serene, so it doesn't distract from the imagery and the marvel it is the chocolate room. Each song is wonderfully cheerful and is exactly what you think of when you think of Child Wonderman. You will need to eat the dishes. Who can take tomorrow, dip it in a dream? Separate the sorrow and collect up all the cream to the candy man. Sweet as a song, Charlie's lucky day will come along. Till that day, you gotta stay in strong, Charlie. Up on top is right where you belong. I don't like the look of it. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee da. If you're not greedy, you will go far. You will live in happiness too. Like the Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo. Doompa Dee Doo. In short, the soundtrack is essential for this film and is just as iconic and recognizable as the film itself. Speaking of film, the second part of my criteria is the film's cinematography, effects, and color science. So one of this can be camera angles, editing, special effects, and a color scheme. So for color scheme, think of Grand Budapest Hotel, Fantastic Mr. Fox, or really anything made by Wes Anderson. In this case, Willy Wonka's cinematography, although not elaborate or noteworthy, does a perfect job of encapsulating and assisting the story while not stealing the spotlight. So recently I wrote a huge school paper on special effects and how practical effects should be favored over CGI. So I'm a huge fan of practical effects. It's almost like I'm seeing a magic trick in a movie, and it's so much more real and genuine than seeing one over-the-top generated effect after another. So I love this film that much more from favoring practical effects over CGI. It really makes for a more believable film, unlike a certain film. I don't care. Examples of beautiful practical effects in this film are the chocolate room scene, the progressively smaller hallway, and the chocolate river. So I love analyzing and learning how films are made, so another point of this checkbox are the behind the scenes or the history of a film. 
A few fun facts about the film. No one had seen The Chocolate Room before that point, so all the reactions are genuine. Wonka's introduction scene was entirely Gene Wilder's idea, and he wouldn't do the movie unless the scene was in it. No one except Gene Wilder knew about the crazy boat scene. Wonka yelling at Charlie at the end was a total surprise. Wonka biting into the cup here was made out of wax and he had to spit it out after each take. The Oompa Loompas came from all around Europe and therefore didn't all speak the same language, which led to issues in lip syncing as well as communication during filming. The whole entire freaking movie was an ad to sell the Wonka bar, which came out in tangent with the film and was sponsored by Quaker Oats, and the title was changed from the novel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to focus on the Wonka name and therefore sell the chocolate easier. And finally, Roald Dahl ended up hating the film halfway through production due to a lack of input he was having, and therefore swore to never allow a reboot or another film to be made of it as long as he was alive. So then when he passed away in 1990, that's when his estate greenlit the Tim Burton heap of trash, I mean film, 15 years later. Ew. And the only way that the color scheme box is checked for me in this film is purely because of the chocolate room scene again. The bright, almost neon colors of the candy give it a lively and welcome feel to the scene. The costume design also adds to this. Charlie's vibrant blue shirt, Wonka's purple jacket, Veruca's red shirt, Violet's blue dress, which also foreshadows her eventual transformation into a blueberry, blend perfectly with the movie. All right, this final one is humor. I talked about humor a bit at the end of my Calf Matter Space video, but clever jokes in a film really make or break a movie for me. That's not to say I don't enjoy documentaries or dramas where I wouldn't expect humor to be used, but a film definitely stands out to me more if a few jokes are sprinkled in. Especially when the humor is original and doesn't involve cliche kid humor or pop culture references, which for me can date a movie, limiting its rewatchability. Willy Wonka was literally made for this category. The comedy in it is unmatched to any kid movie made today. The iconic one-liners, especially from Wonka, are the best example of parent humor in a kid movie. That's all! That's all? Don't you know what this is? My gum, it's gum! Wrong! Stop! Don't! Wait a minute! Strike that. Reverse it. Thank you. Oh. Is it my soul that calls one of my name? Help. Police. Murder. Spitting's a dirty habit. I know a worse one. This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull. No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. The suspense is terrible. He, he's going to go this time. I hope it'll last. You sure this thing will flow, eh, hey, Wonka? With your buoyancy, sir, rest assured. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, my dear lady. That's absurd. Unthinkable. Why? Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room. It goes to the fudge room. Yep. The invention, my dear friends, is 93% perspiration, 6% electricity, 4% evaporation, and 2% butterscotch ripple. That's 105%. Any good? <laughs> There's a healthy amount of slapstick comedy and isn't overused, and not one fart or burp joke. Okay, well, I give it a pass this time only because it's essential to the plot and isn't thrown in at a random moment in the film and is used in a clever way. All right, so those are my three check boxes that make a movie great for me. Willy Wonka, apart from checking all of them, has been a movie I've been watching since I was little, and I will continue to watch it for the rest of my life, really. It's just, like, the perfect movie. I love it. If you haven't seen it already, I honestly don't know what you've been doing with your life. Go and watch the movie. It's available on Netflix right now. It's available on YouTube to rent. It's available literally everywhere. I saw it at Walmart the other day for in, like, the $3 bin. It's everywhere. I oh. recommend you go watch it. Don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. And that'll about do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what video I should do next. I've already recorded audio for episode 3 of Cole's Classics, so stay hyped for that. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Dad, it's only one pipe a day. When a loaf of bread looks like a banquet, I have no right buying tobacco. Ah, uh, what do you think it makes? I don't know, sir. Of course you don't know. You don't know because only I know. If you knew and I didn't know, then you'd be teaching me instead of me teaching you. And for a student to teach his teacher, it's presumptuous and rude. A fantasy. I mean, you said just Shut now. Shut up, off, Sarah, and tell me where the ticket is. Mr. Glue, would you mind saying... I am now telling the computer exactly what he can do with a lifetime supply of chocolate. Get a real one. Colt 45. Pop won't let me have one yet, will you, Pop? Not till you're 12, son. We must remember there are many more important things. Many more important things. Okay, and I can't think of what they are, but I'm sure there must be something. Miss Curtis, did you hear me?
It's your husband's life or your case of Wonka bars. How long will they give me to think it over? I'm Mike TV. Well, oh. you're dead. Wonderful to meet you. Well, it's special, all right. I only hope my Veruca doesn't want one. <laughs> hey, she's got two. I want another one. Snozberries. Who ever heard of a snozberry? We are the music makers. 